Hi friends, welcome to the main sound writing practice. Today we will be looking at the answers for the questions 12 and 13. However, today along with explaining the answers for 12 and 13, I will be discussing a concept called touch and leave concept that we have to use uh, for certain kind of questions in the UPSC mains. So those students who wrote their answers for question 12 and 13 that I have given in my previous video, we would be correcting your answers and those who want to write now can mail it to mainswithsarath.gmail.com. Friends, the questions I have given in the last video are, the 12th question is regarding the social audit. It comes under general studies paper 2 and 13th question is regarding the good governance and how integrity is required in the good governance. This can be given either in GS2 or GS4, mostly GS4. So those students who are seeing this video only for the touch and leave concept, you can fast forward directly go towards the end. After discussing both 12 and 13, I would be going to this concept. So if you are interested in that one, you can go directly to the uh, end of the uh, video. Okay friends, coming to the 12th question, read the question carefully. The question has given a statement, a social audit helps to narrow the ga gaps between the vision and reality. It also said that social audit, social audit also helps in narrowing the gap between efficiency and effectiveness. So you have to, in this context, you have to discuss, discuss how social audit is more comprehensive than the traditional audit. So friends, the statement is here, the statement. And then the question is here. So traditionally, as I tell you, for the statement, you spend some one paragraph. As I always tell you, for the polity questions, as UPSC is asking more discussion-based questions in the polity, general studies paper too, you can write large introduction. Introduction can go even till almost half page for polity answers. Also see here, traditional audit. Traditional audit means generally they audit that the, the they do for the corporates, for the firms or government schemes or the auditing done by the CAG is called traditional audit. It mostly focus on the financial aspect, the financial, uh, the financial audit and the operational audit. Actually operational audit focuses on whether the corporate or system, whether they are following the proper protocols, procedures, mechanisms. Whereas financial audit focuses on the financial aspect, how much is spent, is it spent on the relevant things or not. So these two things, the financial audit and operational audit is also called as traditional audit. And the question is asking whether the social audit is more comprehensive than these kind of traditional audits. That is the question. Okay. So in these kind of questions, in the first, first few lines itself, you have to define social audit. Any question that revolves around a keyword, you have to define the keyword first. This question is about social audit, so define it. So, if you know the definition given by the World Bank, you can give it. If you know the definition given by the Government of India in certain report, you can give it. But generally, you can write the definition in your own language also. This is not Boyle's law or Charles' law of physics, where you have to exactly write what Boyle said. You can write in your own language what you understand by social audit. You can say that social audit actually audits comprehensively all the function and functions and functionalities of any corporate or government department or a government scheme whatever keeping in the mind all these stakeholders see for example in a corporate the stakeholders can be the shareholders the shareholders the employees the employees the end consumers or various stakeholders whereas in a government scheme in a government department the employees the government itself and the employees working in the department, either the permanent employees or corporate based employees and the end beneficiaries, the beneficiaries who will be getting the fruits of the scheme. Keeping in mind all these, all these people, you have to do the comprehensive auditing and this audit is done by, by taking some of these uh, uh, stakeholders into the process. That means even the beneficiaries will participate in the social auditing. That's why we call it a social auditing. Okay. Then why it is important for government schemes, particularly leave the corporate. For the government schemes, why it is important to reduce the corruption. 
Corruption is a major problem in most of the government schemes. So to reduce the corruption, you have to include the beneficiaries in the auditing mechanism. So like that you write the introduction. Then come to the statement. The statement says that social audit helps in narrowing the gap between the vision and reality. These kind of concepts you can explain by giving an example. For example, MGNREGA when it was designed by government of India, the vision, the vision of the scheme was and is, the, the vision is that the jobless people or agricultural laborers who do not have work or who do not have any income for certain days in a year, government has to provide some kind of work to them and provide some employment, some kind of income to them. At the same time, using these people, unskilled labor, government has to get some, get certain projects done which would be useful for the village as a whole. That is the vision. But when come to the reality, the works done by most of the MGNRGA projects are not really useful for the village. Similarly, there are certain ghost beneficiaries. In the master roles, they are duplicating and corruption is happening according to the CAG report. You should never say corruption is happening in your own language. You have to say, according to the CAG in its report, it mentioned that the vision of MGRRG is not matching with the reality. So that is why social audit is introduced in MGNRG. In states like Andhra Pradesh, MGNRG social auditing is must. Because of that, the gradually corruption is getting reduced and the gap between vision and reality is being reduced. Okay. Similarly, the question also talks about the gap between efficiency and effectiveness. You have to say, see basically effectiveness means in any work, the end result that you produce if the end result is very good, you say it is highly effective. But efficiency is different. Efficiency means you produce good end result. It's okay. But using how much resource you are producing it, you have to use minimum resources to produce maximum output. That is called efficient efficiency. So for example, you can, you can explain through example of CA. The Food Corporation of India, its end result is that it should be able to provide the, you know, the food grains at a low cost for no, more number of people. That is called effectiveness. But in this process, how much it is spending, either in the transportation or in the leakages, how much it is, how much resources it is spending, that shall be reduced. For that, social auditing is must for FCA also. In that way, you finish the first statement of the question. First statement, okay. Then they are asking in this context, how the social audit is comprehensive than traditional audit. On this part of the question, you have to spend majority of your answer. Okay. See, remember here, as they are asking you to discuss with relevant examples, some students what they do is, they keep heading examples of social audit and they write the, write few, give few examples, do not do that, do not do that. While discussing the concept, itself you integrate the examples, okay. And those who can draw a diagram of social audit, you can draw it because the evaluator will know that, okay, this candidate has good knowledge in social audit. So that if you draw a diagram, you don't need to explain much, okay. Now, coming to the actual question, how social audit is more comprehensive than the traditional audit? First thing, the traditional audit focuses on the financial aspect, whereas social audit focuses on the social aspect, it means whether it is reaching the beneficiaries, how much benefit are the consumers getting, these things will be taken care in the social audit, whereas traditional audit will see only how much is spent, how much is relevant. Similarly, second point. The traditional operational audit traditionally focuses on only the mechanical operations and procedures. It does not look into the people involved in that. Whereas social audit will look at the social wealth, that means the network created, how much awareness has been generated to the people through the government scheme. Those things will be audited in the social audit. Similarly, traditional audit is annual, only once in a year or at least twice in a year, they will focus on the auditing. Whereas social audit is a continuous process. It will go on, it will go on throughout the year. Another difference is that the, the traditional audit is external, either the CAG or any external auditor will come, they will audit and they will leave it. They will leave the, they will give the report and they will forget about it. Whereas short audit is internal, the people involved in the scheme, involved in the department, involved in the corporate, they will be auditing. So they know the loopholes in the scheme, they know the problems in the scheme. So internal auditing is definitely better than external auditing. Another difference is, another way how you can say social auditing is more comprehensive is, traditional audit will follow a fixed procedure, they will not change the procedure. 
where a short novel will evolve based on the changing objectives, changing ideas, the changing requirements, the whole thing will also change. So short short is an evolving process, like a tree it will grow. Another thing is, short writing is more comprehensive because it is accountable. Short writing is transparent because in the traditional writing, if this is a corporate, if these are the people affected, an order will come from outside and he will do certain kind of writing which will not be known to the actual consumers. Whereas short writing, the end consumers will be involved in the writing, so it will be transparent, they know what is happening inside. It will be transparent to all the stakeholders. So for example, in this, uh, you can bring example here. For example, the MKSS, the organization, an NGO, a large NGO, Mazdur Kisan Sheikh Sangatan is an organization. It is instrumental be behind uh, bringing the RTA Act 2005, instrumental. They actually experimented with this, you know, public hearings called as Jan Sunwais, public hearings, where for any government scheme, they would bring in, they would call all the government, the beneficiaries, they will create a public meeting and they will find out whether they are getting benefited from that, whether any changes are required in the scheme. So, in experimental base they conducted it and based on that, they are the people, MKS are the, is the organization that actually talked about social auditing and based on the social auditing became a norm in many departments. Similarly, social auditing will bring in participate democracy. The people will actually take part in decision making. That is why the Meghalaya Social Audit Act 2017 it is the only state in India which has institutionalized social auditing. In Meghalaya, through this act, the Social Audit Act, it is compulsory, mandatory that every government scheme, every government department shall go through the process of social auditing. Similarly, social auditing will actually increase the legitimacy of the state government, central government. Why? Because people will start believing in the government that yes, government is allowing us to go and see what is happening inside the, uh, the departments or schemes. Because the trust will develop. The trust will develop between the state and the civil society, the people. For example, MGNRJ in Andhra Pradesh, social audit has improved the trust of the people of Andhra Pradesh on the MGNRJ government scheme. Similarly, when the people are involved in the social in the auditing, in, in the social audit, sustainability will be taken care of because they will actually focus on the environment, they would not allow the environment to be degraded. Finally, through social auditing, the community values will be ingrained, institutionalized in the government principles. Government principles. So, uh, you can conclude this answer by saying, you can, uh, in the conclusion generally you can use suggestions, conclusion, you can, suggestions. You can suggest that, say social audit has these many benefits, that's why we have to include social auditing in all the government mechanisms in India, just like how Meghalaya has done, we have to do it and in order to make the social audit a successful phenomenon, we have to train the personnel of different government departments to be sensitive to this kind of auditing and also you make the people aware of social auditing through mass campaigns, okay, and also you appoint a social audit expert team, appoint expert team which would be training the people in different districts to carry kind of social audit. Coming to the next question. The next question is about, see, good governance is possible only if people with integrity are selected for the sensitive and higher posts in the government. Sensitive higher posts generally posts allow the joint secretary level are called as higher posts. Sensitive post means post which are which involved huge amount of money or the huge stakes are there. They got either public stakes or financial stakes are there. We call them as sensitive posts. So for those kind of sensitive posts and higher posts, in people's integrity shall be selected. That is the question, that is the statement. You have to explain the statement. Then suggest methods to ensure this one. Suggest methods. Okay. Now, in these kind of questions, you have to define the keywords. What are the keywords here? Integrity is one keyword good govern another keyword. Define the keywords, then go on write the remaining part of the answer. So, define the keywords. Integrity. You can you can write in your own way. See, in, in the dictionary also they give, integrity is a quality of having complete honesty and adhering, adhering to the strong moral principles. Complete honesty and having strong moral principles. Moral principles. It's called integrity. You can also continue, you can say that integrity is to have consistency. Consistency in the sense, you have to follow the same moral principles in any situation, any time, without changing your principles. That is called integrity. You can draw a diagram, the consistency in the thoughts, ideas, consistency in the speech and behavior, actions. What you think, you have to talk, you have to do. Consistency across the thoughts, speech and action is called integrity. 
diagram generally will bring it will break the monotony when evaluate is got in paper if you if you keep on writing it will monotonous so you break the monotony by including some small diagrams like this some, some created diagrams then come to good governance what is good governance basically what is governance governance is decision making policy making it is at the government level exercising the decisions to control the social and economic policies of the india okay this government this governance will be called as good governance if it can if it has this major you know qualities in the governance that means it should be accountable people involved in the governance shall be accountable for the decisions there should be transparency in decision making everyone should know what is happening there it should be responsive to the citizens to the people it should keep in mind the equality and the equitability it should be effective efficient as discussed earlier anyhow you wanted to discuss all these things you can simply draw a diagram because the question is not about what is good governance if they ask you what is good governance you can write an essay of 10 pages that is not the point here just touch and leave it touch what is good governance just draw a diagram evaluate and understand that okay this guy knows what is good governance enough no need to explain it okay move on to the question now let us move on to the question why we do why do we need integrity in the good governance why because friends good governance is possible not just by the laws though you though you um, uh, prepare pro, though you enact laws the people in the higher posts they know how to find the loopholes in the law and they know how to you know um, uh, within the law how to break the spirit of the law they know that's why laws themselves are not enough the people should have the the people in their position should have integrity also in the sense to post in higher posts that's the scope of corruption is very high corruption that's why definitely you need people's integrity in those positions then you know people are occupying higher positions they should have holistic competence holistic means they should have professional knowledge about a subject matter they should have moral knowledge ethical knowledge i mean they should have ethics and also they should have the emotional intelligence all that together is called holistic competence even the nolan committee nolan committee was constituted in uk regarding the public standards people in the public life what are the standards they have to follow on that the committee was constituted called nolan committee in nolan committee said that one of the cardinal principles for a person in the public life is integrity even the indian civil service found at rules 964 clearly mentions that absolute integrity is must for civil servants okay that's why we require them now come to the point now come to the actual question what are the various methods that you would suggest to ensure that uh, people in the higher positions have integrity one thing i would suggest is lokpal lokyukta shall be strong enough they should watch the people at higher positions right now the lokpal lokyuktas are not very strong in some states they are strong overall they are not strong you have to strengthen them only then these people would be you know following the law as per the spirit and they'll be afraid to do corruption then eth ethical auditing just like how financial auditing is there by the cig eth ethical auditing shall be there in all departments of the government similarly those who follow high ethical standards those who have integrity they have to get promotions frequently and you have to incentivize incentivize the people incentivize the system where ethics are followed by the person similarly care and support shall follow that means you promote the people having ethics and you punish the people uh, who do not follow ethics to punish the people you have to strictly implement the anti corruption laws the laws are there so implement them the first and foremost thing is selection process see while you select the people for above joint secretary one of the things you have to see from the last 10 20 years whether they have followed the consistent principles even even uh, uh, in the selection procedure itself there is a mention that constant integrity or integrity is one of the qualities for people who are promoted to above joint secretary level then the appraisal mechanism for these uh, bureaucrats should be 360 degrees means all dimensions the professional skills you know the hard work the ethics the integrity the emotions everything shall be taken care in the appraisal similarly ethical training shall be given though the people have good integrity still constantly periodically you have to train them in the ethics train them in the ethics so that they would remember adhere to the principles and also just like how i said lokapal and lokayukta is important even cbi and cvc should be strengthened they should have enough teeth to curb the corruption at the higher levels zero tolerance for corruption no tolerance at all particularly those whom you think do not have integrity at the highest levels you ask them for compulsory retirement because once they go to the level of joint secretary all the posts above that will be sensitive posts only so at that 
position at, at that stage if you feel a person is not following integrity you remove him go for compulsory retirement which is already followed by the government recently similarly people should be aware of uh, you know uh, rti and citizen charter so that the public itself can you know catch hold of the uh, shortcomings in the higher positions or higher departments so rti charter shall be strengthened so these are the some, these are some of the things that uh, you have to mention finally how do you conclude this answer you can do us by saying that we require people like some story we require people like lal bahadur shastri who has resigned from the position of uh, uh, railway minister once uh, train accident led to uh, large number of deaths so we need people of such integrity okay friends coming to the concept which i want to discuss today touch and leave concept so touch and leave concept is very important for upsc mains in the last 4 to 5 years because these days if you observe upsc is given two kinds of questions 10 marks questions 50 marks questions if you observe carefully in 10 marks questions they are asking a very broad question which you cannot compress in 10 marks for 15 marks question they are asking very narrow questions which is difficult for you to expand for 15 marks you understand so they are playing with the attitude they are not testing your knowledge they are testing your attitude basically so in this in this kind of uh, uh, upsc pattern touch and leave concept is essential and you should know how to use it i would explain this concept by giving one question yesterday i mean day for yesterday in the previous video i have discussed question number 11 so those who did not see the video go back see my previous video question number 11 see the answer and then come back to understand this uh, touch and leave concept see uh, read the question carefully they are asking you between 1920 to 30 in the india's freedom freedom movement there are lot of new forces that have emerged they are asking about they are asking you to discuss the role of those forces in freedom movement friends you can write an essay on that you can easily write 20 pages on that because between 1920 to 30 there are several forces the communist forces socialist forces peasant force students force lot of forces came into india and if you have to actually discuss their role definitely 10 pages so how do you do that now how do you write the answer for this in just one and a half page or two page how do you do while writing in one and a half page how do you tell the evaluator that boss i have good knowledge of all the forces and i know the facts also you have to convey that message to the evaluator at the same time you have to finish the answer one and a half page so friends here in this kind of questions broad questions where you have to write answer for one and a half page there you have to use touch and leave concept so what is touch and leave concept listen carefully see for this question i would like to say that peasants is one force students is one force caste movements there are the various forces okay now generally what happens let us say i want to talk about the peasant force i would say peasants have been a formidable force in the national movement in 1920s for example bardoli satyagraha okay or if you know any other peasant movements you can mention those peasant movements also but when you write bardoli satyagraha in gujarat naturally you would like to write few few words about the few sentences it happened in gujarat because of these reasons patel has actually led the movement you would be forced to write you stop don't write just say peasants has been a great force in the independence movement in 1920s particularly bardoli satyagraha helped in creating new leaders like patel who later acted as the major uh, you know path pathfinders for the movement you leave it there you touch it and leave it second thing you say the you know the peasant movements in madras and mumbai fought fought against the landlords because of that they got social conscious leave it leave it there you don't explain don't say what are the peasant movements in madras and Chan, madras and mumbai don't do that similarly student force for example youth youth participated actively they came to the forefront for example as i told you the all bengal students conference led by jawaharlal nehru is an example leave it there see you don't be what happens is if you have knowledge on some issue you cannot shop it there general tendency of people is that i have good knowledge on this uh, uh, all bengal student conference then what i will do i'll try to write two or three points on the don't write that just touch it and leave it you may ask me why should you touch it when you cannot write about that the point is friends just what you are doing is you're telling the evaluator that boss i have knowledge on all this thing that's all there is no scope for you to explain explain anything in this answer how can you explain you know how can you explain so many things just one and a half page i am giving it to 10 marks 10 marks one and a half page only how can i explain impossible so don't get panic touch and leave 
ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ క్యాస్ట్ మూమెంట్స్ జస్ట్ సే స్వరాజ్య పార్టీ స్వరాజ్య పార్టీ ఇన్ చెన్నై ఆర్ సెల్ఫ్ నాట్ స్వరాజ్ ఫార్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఐమ్ సారీ సెల్ఫ్ సెల్ఫ్ రెస్పెక్ట్ మూమెంట్ బై పెరియార్ జస్టిస్ పార్టీ అగైన్ ఇన్ చెన్నై ఓకే ఆర్ మేబీ ఇన్ మహారాష్ట్ర యాజ్ అ టోల్ యూ సత్య సోదక్ యాక్టివిస్ట్ దీస్ మూమెంట్స్ క్రియేటెడ్ సోషల్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ అమౌంగ్ ద బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ బ్యాక్వర్డ్ క్లాసెస్ హూ లేటర్ హెల్ప్ ఇన్ ద ఫ్రీడమ్ మూమెంట్ దట్స్ ఆల్ లీవ్ ఇట్ దే వర్కర్స్ మూమెంట్ జస్ట్ రైట్ సమ్ ట్రేడ్ యూనియన్స్ ఆల్ ఇండియా ట్రేడ్ యూనియన్ కాంగ్రెస్ టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ లీవ్ ఇట్ నోట్ ఇన్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ దట్స్ రెవల్యూషనరీ యాక్టివిస్ట్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ టోల్ యూ ద యుగాంతర్ ద అనుశీలన్ ద చితగాంగ్ రెవల్యూషన్ యాక్టివిస్ట్ బై సూర్యాసేన్ you know they they filled the political vacuum created by the withdrawal of non cooperation movement however they could not evolve a broad social economic policy leave it there so you are mentioning several facts but not going details this thing i i would call friends is touch and leave policy this touch and leave concept is you just touch a fact or concept just leave it don't go in detail again touch next one leave it touch and leave it so in this way if you move within one end of page you can show all the uh, forces of national movement you can show your knowledge you can show the facts at the same time don't explain anything okay friends okay then uh, the uh, yeah the questions for tomorrow by the way i would i would want to tell you some creative people even even draw the map you see they will draw the map and they would show in the map they would show you know yugantar uh, you got you know the chatagong revolution party is here here the justice the sorry the selfless movement is here satya sodhak activists is here you know or the uh, you know like that when you discuss different aspects just draw a map mention just name them so that you are creatively showing that across india different forces have come into the picture for example bardo satyagraha here like that creativity any of friends uh, questions for tomorrow one question is about the effect of covid on the economics of india second question is about water crisis geography water crisis can be asked in general studies paper 3 or 1 similarly covid can be asked in general studies paper 3 3 only it asks 3 only okay write the answers and submit it to the mains with sarjima.com thank you friends have a nice day bye